everybody it's february 1st redness day that's right it's the first broadcast february 2023 you believe we're already in the second month of this year it's flying by man holy cow unbelievable we got red will met with us today we're going to be talking about casino the movie casino 1995 how accurate was it how inaccurate was it Where'd they goof up? Did Marty, was he perfect? Hell no. All kinds of mistakes and all kinds of accuracies. So that's what we're going to be talking about. Welcome back. It's my vlog. <music> Mr. Redwood Met, how are you doing today? I am doing fine. It's warm here. <laughs> <laughs> What well, was cold the other day, now it's warm, then it was cold, now it's warm, but hey, that's what happens. My poor dog doesn't know what... <laughs> One day she's shedding, the next day she's growing in. <laughs> Fantastic. All right, Red, we're going to talk about the movie Casino. For those of you that are new to the channel, be sure to hit the subscribe button down below, um, and uh, be sure to hit the like button if you're just coming in. So we're, uh, we're going to get this thing started up. Don't forget to do that. So, um, John Coletti, how's it going? How's the screenplay coming along? Um, the screenplay is going well. Uh, Joe Collada was just talking about it the other day. He said um, some important people are looking at it. So we're going we're gonna to get to that. Catherine Guerrero, Luminous Grin, Scott, everybody. Hey, how's it going? Let's jump into the meat of this. There's a whole lot of people coming into the room. And I think today is going to be a pretty hot day because... Uh, <laughs> I did some digging. Red did some digging. Red was actually kind of impressed with what I came up with on this. Very impressed. Because yes. in the very beginning, backstory on this is in the very beginning, I said, Casino wasn't real. I mean, there are a lot of things that were wrong about it. And totally. he said, oh, no, it was real. <laughs> then he went to dig No, it. <laughs> no. There, look, there's people on Facebook saying, oh, some people take this as uh, Las Vegas history. You know, it's almost they, they accept this like it's uh, actual history as if the movie was a documentary <laughs> now i've always said the movie is damn near a documentary red said ain't even close to what happened so let's get started opening scene very first thing that we see on the screen before bob de niro walks out gets into cadillac kaboom what's the first thing we see we see this 1983 Inaccurate. It was 1982 that the car bombing happened. So just right out the gate, right out of the gate, we got something that's off here. It's not right. And I thought, wow, they got that. Why did they get that wrong? Did they intentionally get that wrong? I mean, why would they do that? Why would they? Because Nick Pelleggi had to have known it was 1982 when the car bombing happened. Yeah, but the editors didn't. <laughs> The editors the producer the step in and say, whoa, 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 wait a minute. This date is wrong. <laughs> Let's put the right one up there. No, no. Okay. Now, this isn't really a mistake. This is just a, you know, something that we I'm all over. noticed. We all noticed this. That's the Main Street Station Casino parking lot. That's the California in the background. And that is a dummy in the car. <laughs> Now, everybody who watched the movie noticed the dummy, right? I mean, that's that's blatant. That's a blatant. I wouldn't say an error. It's just, eh, okay. So, let's move on. The hey, would you want to put a real person in there? <laughs> well, hell no. I mean, of course not. But, I, you know, I think he did a good job, though. I mean, it's close. Look at I that. It's not, it's 
not it's very similar until you, get, ahead, to the, you, until you get to the ambulance <laughs> oh the ambulance yeah all right well we'll talk about that in a little bit so the 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 um pepper mill that's the pepper mill right there you see it right in the very beginning of the movie which the pepper mill famous i mean been there since 1973 love going to the pepper mill i got nothing but good things to say about that place anyway that's the first time you see it then we get to the count room the count room that's right in the beginning of the movie what the hell do you think we're doing out here in the middle of the desert you think that we're just sitting here not taking it it's all about the money all about that money which is supposedly happening in 19 um 70s 73 or no early 70s this is supposed to be happening okay They're taking all this money in yet in this scene if you look closely at these coins, and I don't know if any of you out there are coin collectors, numismatics, huh? Anybody a numismatic into the numismatics? No, numismatics. Anyway, um, there is uh, on the face of these dollar coins, Eisenhower. On the back is an American eagle. Not on all of them. <laughs> no, not on all of them. Look closely. Look closely. Let's go in. Let's, let's zoom in on one of these. Look at that. That's the back of a 1976 bicentennial dollar. So supposedly this is 1973. Here's a 76 coin that's sitting there, um, which I happen to notice and thought, well, that's a little bit off. Anyway, so uh, what are your thoughts, Red? Red? They hoped. That's all they took. They said, give me more quarters and throw them up there. They're dollars, Red. Dollars. What are they going to do? Like the blueberries? Like the blueberries? They're going to count each one and look at each one and put it in there hand by hand? We're going to get to the blueberries. That's in a little bit, okay? Let's not jump ahead of ourselves. For those of you that have watched the channel a long time, you know that Frank Collada was in the movie Casino. This is the first time you see him in the movie Casino. That's at the glass house, or the glass, glass pool, glass hotel, glass pool hotel. It's gone now. They tore it down. But that's where he's staying, in front of that car. That car right there, that is, it's a Lincoln. Is that right, Red? Lincoln convertible? It's a Cadillac. It's that's a Cadillac. Cadillac. It's a Cadillac convertible, right? And no, it's not a converted. It's a Brits. It's a Cadillac oh, it's a Brits. Brits. Where it's got the convertible. Okay, top. okay, because of the cloth top on there. Okay, so right. no, are you sure that's a Lincoln, dude? No. All right. At no, any rate, at any Brits. rate, at any rate, let me use a Chicago phrase. At any rate, <laughs> at any rate, my buddy down the street, Rick. His his friend owns that car. Found it at the the uh, um, uh, airplane hangar out in Boulder. Freed's Bakery owned it for pff, like eighty years. Sat on this thing, not eighty years, but you know they've they sat on it for a long time. He bought it, so that's the blowjob car. Well, ask him. Ask him next time you talk to him if it's a, a Lincoln or a Cadillac. He's going to tell you it's a Caddy. I'm going to ask him. Now I'm going to, I'm going to ask him. I'm going to call him up later today. All right, so let's get back to the movie here. All right. Nikki gets to town. Him and um, Lefty Rosenthal, or Sam Ace Rothstein, they go driving around town. And they have a little conversation, you know, about, you want me in town? I should be in town. What are we going to do while I'm in town? That's the Fremont. You can read that. What do you read think about me coming out here? What do you think about me coming yeah, out here? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What do you think about me coming out? Okay, that's the background. That's the Fremont. Now, this is shot in 1994. There was no canopy over Fremont Street. You're able to drive down Fremont Street before Naked Spider-Man and Drunk SpongeBob and Captain Hook and Captain Hooker. They were all out there working the street. You could drive down it. The next shot, that's the Fremont in the background off to the left. I know I stood in front of it, all, I don't know, 
what, for 10 years wearing a diaper? So, no, I'm just kidding. That wasn't the diaper guy. All right. <laughs> Red's going, no, you wore a diaper and stood out there. Okay, one night I did. The rest of the time I did magic. Did you really? No, I didn't. I'm just did kidding. Did you really? Okay. Red, come on. You think I wore a diaper on the street? Come on. <laughs> no, I wore pasties and put out there, but never a diaper. All right. So, the Sahara is in the next shot. Now, anybody who's been to Vegas knows that the Fremont and the Sahara are at two different ends of the world. Yet, they cut back and forth between the Fremont and the Sahara. Back to the Fremont. That's the Fremont sign right there and the neon. And then they're in front of the plaza, which is plausible. But not in, you know, a half a second time because it's two blocks away. But that's some continuity issues. Also, look behind De Niro as they're driving around during that scene. You see that 19, I don't know, that's got to be a, what, 92 Chevy pickup? Maybe yeah. a Ford? What is that thing? It's a 92, 93, somewhere in there. Here's a van. You see the three windows behind, right off De Niro's mouth and his nose? That's the back of the van. Yeah. Here's the front of the van, okay? There's the two, just, just two frames apart. That's a 1990-something van. It's a white van, passenger it's van. It's a minivan. Mm. Oh, it's a minivan. It looks like it's got an extra high top that got the turtle shell on top. Okay. Yeah, but it's anyway. sloped in the front. Anyway, again, this is supposed to be in the 70s, and you got... 1990s vehicles driving around mm. so we could say that there's some inaccuracies there i'll agree but did tony really come out here to vegas red yes he did that's the truth and de niro was he out here he won. He was rather and, lefty and rosenthal 70, 71. in 1971 but rosenthal was already there right rosenthal came out here before, prior to that 68, 69. Stardust opened in 1958. So Rosenthal got kicked, kicked out of Miami. He got kicked out of Miami and he went there in like 68 or 69. It's also when Rosenthal flipped was back in Miami when the feds right. rolled it, made him an informant. Oh, uh, we are. Hey, guys, we're like 12 and a half minutes into this thing. Um Adam, were you the kick me in the balls guy? Hell no, that wasn't me. I'd never stand out there. Wow. Diaper. Yes, Don, that's what they called me. They called me Diaper. So, <laughs> uh, I use that line when I'm on, when I'm dates. Milk fed veal. I have no idea what the hell that means, Jerry Mason, but welcome to the channel. I'm glad that you're participating. Oh, um, he's talking about the blowjob. He's talking about the blowjob with Bo. Oh. He said, you know, that veal, that veal out, he said, you don't get the same kind of veal. They oh. got to beat it and everything else. Not like the veal we have, milk, the milk fed oh, veal. Oh, that's what he's talking about. Thank you. The glass pool in, Slapsy Maxi. I'm just going the glass pool motel, the hotel. The glass pool in, that was the name of it. Um, Eldo. Yeah, it was an Eldorado that he was in, in the movie. Um, hey, guys, welcome, welcome in, everybody. And uh, if you're new, Hit the like, hit the subscribe. Street stories. Yes, Anybody please. heard from John Apollo Apollo lately? He was on a few weeks ago, Anthony. We did see him a few weeks ago. So he was on Monday on my show. I have seen Diaper Guy. It's not a pretty sight. Um, seriously, for those of you that that went down to Fremont Street, Cupid, the guy who wore the diaper, ran around. He originally was a. Um, uh, an impersonator. He did an impersonation of that um, race car driver. Come on, who's the famous race car driver? Petty. Petty. Hmm. Petty? Race car driver. I don't remember. Petty. Damn it. Okay. Petty. What? Like Tom Petty? No, Earnhardt. Dale Earnhardt. Earnhardt. Dale Earnhardt. Dale Earnhardt. Okay. Was Dale Earnhardt impersonator. Okay. So Dale Earnhardt. <clears throat> he ended up becoming the Cupid. He passed away a few uh, few weeks ago. I saw a, a little uh... Ricky Bobby. I love you, Luminous it's Grit. Good. Ricky Bobby. <laughs> Shake it, bank, baby. 
Uh, Don Chichia, she was in an accident. Misty was in an accident. Yeah, I had an accident, but she was okay after that. Um, so I don't know what's going on with Misty. I haven't seen Misty in a little while. But if it be, people get busy time of the year, you know. At, right after the holidays, people are trying to make money, pay for all the Christmas spending that they spent. So, all right, back to the movie. I just wanted to say hello to all of you. So, um, all right. Joseph Reedy, he is the, what, executive producer, writer, what, what did he do on the movie, Red? Joe Reedy? I'm not sure. That doesn't know. The only thing I knew about was he was in The Godfather. He did something there. Right. That's that's true. He, he did. Um, so on the movie Casino, Reedy was the, well, Reedy was in the movie, okay? This is what I'm getting at. He's the winner. That's what he's credited as, the winner. <clears throat> but Reedy also was, he wasn't the writer. Um, what was he, executive producer? He might have been one of them. There were several. Yeah, he could have been. Hold on. Um, yeah, well, he plays the winner. Now, that, let's talk about this. The guys that are cheating. <laughs> Really happened. There was actually a guy who invented a, or who developed some computer system that would help with counting cards. And uh, there he was second unit or assistant. He was assistant director. So there you go. He was assistant director. So he was Marty's assistant director. And uh, he plays the winner in the movie. But the cheater, the guy who gets caught. Let's talk about this. All right. Fake hand or fake hammer? Let's. Let's, you guys decide, let's, uh, let's get into this fake hand or fake hammer. That's the first, that's the frame where the hand is first hit and struck is right here. Second frame, there's a little blood squirts out of the hand or the hammer. Okay. We don't know again, which one was real, which one was fake, but we're going to, we're going to get to it. What we think. Okay. There's frame up after it. And you see there's blood, but that hand, let's go back to frame one. That hand didn't move. I mean, it didn't move an inch. It didn't move an inch. Not underneath. It didn't even flinch. <laughs> it didn't even flinch, man. That hand just lays there. Now, the arm, the right arm, it could be down inside the table through a hole. And then that fake arm and where the security guard is hand, handing you, his hand is on the elbow, would be covering that block in between the fake arm and the real arm going down into the table. Let's look at the next frame. Close up. The damn hand looks kind of real, doesn't it, Red? I mean, it looks damn near identical to the other it one. It looks swollen. It looks swollen, but you compare it to the other hand. It doesn't look like it's the same hand. The arms are thicker. The arm is thicker arms than the other thick. arm. The arms are thicker. Okay. So let's say here's the second, here's the next hit that happens. Now it hits, it comes in contact with the right, just above the right thumb is where it's hitting the palm, the back it of the palm. Looks like the knuckle or the web. Yeah, the knuckle kind the of the web. knuckle. Okay, but here's, here's where we've got some problems. You see how that, now you see the fingers on the left, see how they, see how they kind of flex outward, that pinky from one, this frame to the next, it flexes a little bit. Got to be pretty dumb to cheat at a known mob casino. Yeah, you got you to gotta be pretty stupid huh, to do that. Hey, Tim Steffes. Steffs. Sorry, Tim Steffs. Hey, Red and Adam. Hope you guys are having a great day, brothers. Hey, Tim, never saw your name in here before. Welcome into the channel. Mike Randolph. No fake hand. Hey, Tim. Real one, huh? Mike thinks it's a real one. Let's, let's, uh, it's not the same hand, Bobby Bag of Donuts. It ain't the same hand. Okay, let's, let's look at the next couple frames. Okay. Look at that look on his face. Hold on. Look at that look on his face, Red. He goes from, from poor to uh, absolute pain. The look on the face. Good, good actor, but the hand doesn't good. work right. That hand, see here? Now, here's the part I had the problem with. Let me move the, the, the comment off of the screen. Okay, so here's the problem. Watch the fingers. Watch the two fingers in the right hand here. They don't move naturally. See that? From that frame to this frame. See how they just kind of, they kind of bounce apart as if they're rubber, right? Or silicone, huh? 
What do you think, Rhett? Do you see that? I think it's a fake hand. You think it's a fake, huh? I know they couldn't get me to volunteer to put my hand down there. <laughs> yeah, I don't know, man. I wouldn't want to do that either. But I'd say that that's... Yeah. Now, here they pull his hand back, and you see there's no hole in the table for his arm to go down into a hole, like I said earlier. I said maybe maybe his arm's down in a hole, and then the fake arm's But it's right off. at the red. It's right at the edge of the table. Well, no, I mean up here, his his arm's halfway up the table. He's, you know, I mean, look at the look at the first couple shots here. He's halfway up that table. That's a foot and a half up the table there. And then you see him getting slid back. So his, his arm couldn't have been, unless unless they filmed this first, him getting pulled off, and then filmed smacking his hand, or put a different table in there when they pulled it off, or it's his real hand and they used the rubber hammer. I don't know. What do you guys think? Let's look at the comments. I think it's uh, a uh, hand. Arm. Two tables. Two tables. Yeah, there are two tables. It's a fake. They switch tables. <laughs> it's movie yeah, bad thing. Hey, maybe it's fake as fuck. The, tu the big tuna. The verdict is in. It's fake. Why didn't they smash the other hand too? Um... Adam's eyesight is off. Arms you tell them, are you a lefty? He, he asked no, no, are you he, a lefty he asked, or a righty? Actually, you know what? I, now, I searched the movie for this. He said to him, I saw that you were um, shuffling the checks, the chips, with your left hand. Or with your right hand. Can you do that with your left hand? And he said, I don't know. And then, then they, now you're going to have to learn how to. Okay. <laughs> they never show. Well, when De Niro gets there, no, remember he gets there, he leans down, he sees the dealer lifting his cards high, he looks across the way, he sees the guy sitting there moping around. Okay. Yeah, he looked at the one dealer and he said he's weak, but he's not that weak. They never show him shuffling chips, man. Not with his right or his left hand. They don't show that. So I don't know why he said that he. I saw you shuffling your chips with your. Why didn't they have somebody shuffle them? They should have had that. Anyway, since they made a point of it, they should have. So. <laughs> anyway. Did you, you get? <laughs> That's the blood coming out of his hands after the hammer blows. It, it, it's true. So they need to remake this movie. No fake hands. Put real head in vice, etc. <laughs> Vlad, I'm with you, man. <laughs> Remake it and make it a no, just yeah. Okay, let's get back to the movie. I got a scene to play for you guys. Um, let's go to our movie clips and okay, this is an in uh, what a continuity error. Let's just say, watch Nancy's <laughs> hair. Well, I say Nancy, but the name in the movie was different, but this is supposed to be Tony's wife. Watch her hair when the diamond falls out, then he smacks her in the face. And then he goes to give her a kiss and her hair is back up in a bun. Carmen's not here. I might be across the street. Okay, so was there really a Carmine? Wasn't there a Carmine? Does it matter? They're just, it's Hollywood. Okay, so did Tony smuggle diamonds in? Point. Did Tony smuggle diamonds in? Yes. I heard he did. Yes, from Antwerp. So that's that's a truth. So that really happened. So um, so we got to go with that. That, that really happened. Uh, we're cheaters. I don't know did if really his wife smashed? smuggled in her hair, though. <laughs> did, did they really smash the hands of people who cheated in casinos? I mean, I'll just tell you, I got friends that have lived here a long time and told me stories. I know somebody who was put in the trunk of a car because he took out too many markers in the casino and was driven out into the desert to a piece of land that he owned. And they took him out of the trunk and they said, well, that's a nice view of the strip that you have up here, which is now what's Summerlin. And said, next time that you come up here uh, with us, you aren't going to be able to see it because we're going to take your eyeballs out. <laughs> no, I mean, they, they, they literally told that to him. And, and I heard that from, from him. He had a gambling issue and he did that. Entertainer here in town. Super nice guy, but, you know, little issues. Anyway, I've heard that. 
I've also heard from police officers, and I'm not going to mention any names, okay? <laughs> but cops that worked out here back in the day, they were they were they were cowboys. They didn't, you know, they they took people out of town. Get the hell out of town. Don't come back. You know, there was that kind of stuff. With guys, you know, well, cops. Rosenthal, all, during, Lefty Rosenthal during his interview with John Drummond yeah. said that when he arrived in Las Vegas, they met him at the airport and brought him to the sheriff's department. He choked him until mm -hmm. he almost passed out. And he said, leave. Mm -hmm. And they put, they brought him back to the air, airport oh. and he came back again. And he said, this is going to keep happening to you every time you come back. Yeah. That's a fact. I heard of Chicago police officers back in the day, you know, taking somebody into the bathroom and roughing them up and sticking their head in the in urinals and, you know, down uh, the toilet and flushing yeah, the toilet. Yeah. That kind of shit. Yeah. I've heard, I've heard they, you know, they did. Do you think it was any different out West? No. It's no different out here. Same, same thing, except probably a little rougher. They get away with a little bit more out here. Um, quickly, let's go, let's go to the comments. Um, 60s, yes. Chronicas de El Horse. Welcome to the channel, dude. Uh, yes, in the 60s and 70s, <laughs> people were getting beat up, I was told, by Gambler. Uh, they didn't screw around. They wanted a message sent. And as a matter of fact, there was a whole crew of guys that were shaking down the casinos. And they were part of that crew. And they wanted to send a message. According to, I thought, Lefty's Rosen, uh, Rosenthal's interviews. Uh, anyway, um, most scenes were filmed in the Riviera. Correct. The interior shots were all of the Riviera. And the exterior shots were all of the landmark. But what some of you might not know is that when the dancers weighed in, that is the Jubilation Theater inside of the Flamingo. Did I say flamingo? I meant Bally's. <laughs> Oops. Right. I meant Bally's. I right. misspoke. That's, that's where he made the comment about uh, these these gals are weighing, they're gaining weight, so we got to weigh them every day. Now, Red, that's a real thing. I mean, that's not, that's a real thing. Dancers get put on Weight Watch. That's why I never became a dancer, because <laughs> I don't want to put me on Weight Watch. You know what I'm saying? I said, I'll do magic Hell with dancing. I'll do magic. <laughs> <laughs> and I just deleted the clip of me dancing. Oh, well. So the, uh, <laughs> the um, um, let's talk about the feet on the table, the cowboy with the feet on the table. Oh, yeah. There's an inaccuracy in this. There's a, it's a major, it's, major. It's, now, did it really happen? All right. If somebody went in the casino, put their feet up on the table, they're going to be kicked out. That's oh, true. Definitely. That would have happened. 100%. And take their shoes off, their boots off. They'd have been asked to leave. Stinky feet weird. up on there? Yeah. No, yes. I, I ain't gonna work. Yeah. Uh, listen, listen to what he says. Listen to what De Niro says here. Okay, listen closely. I don't give a shit who he's connected to. Tell him to take his fucking feet off the table. What's he think this is a goddamn sawdust joint? All right. What's he think this is a goddamn sawdust joint? That means because downtown on Fremont Street, you got to remember. Benny Big. The old casinos used boy. to be just dirt floors. No, no, they had wood floors. They had wooden floors, but they had spittoons next to the tables, and they'd sprinkle sawdust on the floor around the spittoons, and that's why they call them sawdust joints. So that's what he's referring to when he says sawdust joint. For those of you that might not know that, okay, let's go to the next scene. This is all in a row, and by the way, I'm breaking these up so that we don't get copyright infringements and all that kind of crap. So here's the next part of it, the scene. You know you're fucking with, huh? Do you? You fucking faggot! Do you know who you're fucking with? Leave me alone! Here we go. You're fucking kidding me! Sure enough, an hour later, I get the call. Okay, before we get to the I get the call. I want to yeah. go back to that particular just scene, okay? The deputy sheriff hits his head against the door. That is correct. Um, he he does. He hits his head, and he hits his head hard, man. I mean, his he head. He opened the door. He, he opened, opened the door with his head. No, he didn't open the door. If the wall would have been a door, he would have opened it, okay? But he <laughs> didn't open the door. He, um, he, he hit his head, and he hit his head hard, man. 
I mean really hard. Here, let's take a look at it again. Just that little clip. I'm processing it. Is this that is the closest moved. to us? This is why I moved my hard drive, Red. Here we go. Come on, the guy on the right. Check out his head right above the, the, the fire extinguisher. Watch that. Oh, damn, he hit it hard, man. Boom. I mean, it literally bounces off the wall. You oh, so you saw it real good there. Yeah. Oh, God, it makes me crazy. Oh, all right, so he hits his head against the wall on the way out. All right, back. Hour later, he gets the phone call. People over there right now, you apologize. You better hope he lets you back in. If you ever get out of line over there again, I'll smash your fucking head so hard, you won't be able to get that cowboy hat. And you hear me? You fucking hick. I think it goes out of order. Then this one. He said he insulted him. Said he called him a name. And said he, uh, he disrespected the place. Is that right, Red? That's yeah. what we get in that phone call. Correct? And that's all he yes, tells sir. him. It's all he tells him. That's the information. Listen. Ace, what happened over there? I mean, did you know that guy you threw out was with me? No, I didn't know that, but you know what he did? Nah. Insulted Billy. Then I walked over to him politely. He tells me to go fuck myself. God. Then he called me a faggot. So what? Oh, oh, my. Hey, come here. He insulted, told him to fuck himself, called him a faggot. What? what? That's it. You go over there right now, you apologize. You better. Tells him to go apologize. Right? And then what? Okay. So, he, he, he tells him he insulted him, called him a name. He said, "Yeah, Nikki, I'm really sorry. Please let him back in." Blah blah blah. Right? Not a word about his feet being up on the table, was there, Red? No. They showed his feet his on the table in the movie. Only about his language. They showed Ace Rothstein seeing his feet up on the table, but Ace never told Nikki that the guy had his feet on the table. Listen to, what happened. listen to what he listen to what happens when he gets off the phone. Now, how the hell did he know that he took his boots off and put his feet up on the table? And never, never was told that in never the conversation. Never communicated in the phone conversation. Okay, so it was I'm going to say communicated in the phone. inaccuracy, inaccuracy, continuity, flow. I guess whatever you want to call it. That's that's what you got there. All right, so. Oh, fact versus fiction, Red. Again, they'd have thrown somebody out of the casino, taking their boots off and putting their feet on a the table. They still would today. You'd be asked to leave. <laughs> now, would they put you out by, by, by your head? Would you use your head? No. They'd, they'd throw you out. No. Okay. Uh, Jonathan and David. David and Jonathan. They're even on the sign. Look at that. Even on the sign in the background, it says David and Jonathan. And their tiger act. Okay. Here it is in the movie Casino Red. You know, Ace could be a very touchy guy, especially when he got bigger and bigger in town. Like when he hired that Jonathan and David and their tigers away from the palace by building them a new stage and then giving them a silver rolls royce. And he did really give them a silver rolls royce. That's a fact. I brought it up to you. I brought it up to you. Really did bring them and over from the frontier. I believe they're at the frontier and brought them to the Stardust. And then later, Steve Wynn brought them to the Mirage, offered them more money than what the Stardust was offering. So, which the Mirage opened in the mid 80s. So, yeah. And it was pretty much the mob's run was over at the Stardust anyway. So they were, Lefty was out of town by then. How Lefty left in 82. After the car bombing, not eighty-three, like they say in the <laughs> movie. Well, in the very beginning, we believe they get an inaccuracy in the first frame of the movie. Okay, but let's let's move on. So, um, do you remember the Idle Spurs, sixty miles outside of town, right? Sixty miles to Vegas, which the Idle Spurs is in Sandy Valley. It's still there. It's gotten a facelift. They've remodeled the inside. It doesn't look anything like uh, what it used to look like. And from what I understand, that actually was their phone number on the sign. And they uh, had to change it after the movie because they got too many phone calls. People call and say, hey, is that really in the movie casino? And I don't know what. So hold on one second. We got somebody calling in here. And I'm going to put them on 
Hey, Joe Collada, how are you doing? I'm doing real good, Adam. How are you doing, my friend? Doing good, man. We're on air right now. Um, okay. Yeah, I just seen a picture. That's Siegfried and Roy, right? That's supposed to be Siegfried and Roy in the movie Casino, yes. And myself were out there, and we were staying at the Stardust, and they were appearing there. And my brother says to Louis Salerno, he was like a boss at the Stardust. He said, I'd like to get my brother in the scene. She had no problem, Frank. So we go to the kiss, we go into the showroom, and they walk us to the booth, and it's right on the stage. And, and it's like a whole, like, ten people. It was like a big, like, horseshoe-shaped booth. And I said, Frank, are you going to come in with us? Before we walked in, there's him. I'll come in later. So we go there, and we sit in this big booth. And it was just me and my wife. And then my brother came in later. And, I mean, that's the kind of cloud they had back then, uh, years ago. Yeah, we sat right on the, uh, right in the front on the stage. It was something to see. How was the show? It, from what I remember, it was outstanding. I mean, it, that was over forty years ago. But yeah, it was Joe, great. I had the same. Yeah. Joe, I had the same thing happen to me when I went to see Don Rickles. They rolled out this big booth, high back booth. Uh -huh. oh, the Stardust to so watch Rickles. Yeah. 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 Oh my God. They knew how yeah, to. Was... They knew how to treat the, the the mob. Knew how to treat people. They knew how to take yeah. care of people, man. Yeah. My, yeah, my brother didn't put the, the reservation in his name. He put it in my name. He couldn't put it in his name. Even though we had the same last name, it was Joe Collada. And me and my wife sat there. It was great. That's awesome. And, that, and then that thing you talked about with the policeman putting the head in the toilet, you were referring to me, the story I told you. You, you told me that story. I didn't want to say that, but yeah, you told me that story about that they, they roughed you up in the bathroom once, right? Yeah, but he did something wrong and I'm kind of embarrassed of it now, but I was a kid then. And when I was at the hospital because someone got shot and the coppers came in and they're like, uh, who, who was with you? And I'm like, no, nobody has by myself. I should never brought the kid to the hospital, but I didn't know. I did the right thing anyhow. But anyhow, they brought me in the bathroom and he knees me in the balls and he puts my head in the urinal and he takes my head out and he knees me again and puts my head in there oh man i mean they used to get away with that back then they can't ever get away with that today no it's no it's nothing i'm proud of you know no. my brother put a stop to my criminal activity right away he didn't want me to be like that yeah he went he... to the police station and i was in the lockup and i had gotten beat up pretty good by the police I told a lockup keeper, whatever you do, don't let him in the cell with me. He's going to offer you money and everything. <laughs> sure enough, my brother came in. He looked like, uh, I don't know if you remember the Oakland Raiders. Manny Sistrunk, he had a bald head. Yeah. And they were showing one time steam coming out of the top of his head. That's how my brother looked when he was coming down the stairs. Steam coming out of the top of his head and out of his ears. Oh my sure enough, God. he offered the lockup keeper... Let me in that cell. That's my kid brother. He's nah, I can't do that. He already took a bad beating. My brother just wants to give him a hundred dollars to let him in. He wouldn't let him in hey. with me. He's like, I'll kill you for this. You're gonna. Our mother went through enough with daddy, and now me, and now you. He said, This ain't gonna work. Uh -huh. So, but anyhow, that yeah, was a kid then. But hey, we he all got, we he all got be... me out of it. He got me out of it. Uh. He was a good big brother. He made you. He made you pay for it too, didn't he? He made you go and yeah, he, hock your car and everything. Yeah, he said, uh, "You want to be a wise guy? <laughs> sell your car." He bought me a new car. He said, "I'm not going to sell my car." Oh yeah, you're going to sell your car. That's what wise guys do when they get in trouble. Made me sell my car. Go borrow money from a, a loan person. And I hit him. The guy didn't put me on juice. All I had to. All I needed was a couple more thousand from what I had saved and when I sold my car. The guy gave me uh, two thousand. I had to give him two hundred a month for a year. But that's a true story. That's yeah. My brother didn't want me to be bad. He didn't want me to go through what he went through. He was a good he brother was, to you. Yeah, he was the best. He was the best. He's such I a just wish he could have lasted another ten years. Yeah, we, we all do. God, we all do, Joe. I'm sorry I interrupted you guys. No, no. Uh, uh. Not yeah, at all, I can man. Any time. Policeman's name that to me to two places. I'm not going to mention their name because 
one of their kids is a big boss in the Chicago police yeah. department now, but I don't want to mention their names. No, you but, don't. Uh, yeah, that, yeah, that happened in 1966. 66. Wow. Yeah, yeah, 66. That's when Champagne's Cafe opened in Las Vegas. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I don't know okay. what the hell that has to do with yeah. it, but I'm just saying. <laughs> Joe, what one of station was it? More stories, but that's enough for now. Let's get back to your business, buddy. All right. Well, we'll talk soon, Joey. Thank you, my friend. Bye, Take guys. care. Bye bye. See you. Bye, everybody. Uh, Joe Colada, everybody. He doesn't joke a little. It's Joe Colada. Um, <laughs> I always love hearing from Joe. Uh, anytime the Joe calls in, it's uh, yeah. everybody loves the stories. Pete Byron. I keep taking, I'm going to take the little chunks of Joe calling in and I'm going to make them their own little um, shorts for you guys to listen to. So it's because uh, not everybody gets to catch the whole show and you never know when Joe's going to call in. So uh, yeah. All right. So let's get back to the movie because we've got a little bit of time left. And I think we're going to have to do a part two next week, Red. <laughs> Even though we're going to talk about this on Red Show uh, after this one, I, I, I have a feeling we're going to have to uh, to do a part two to this because we aren't going to get through all of it. Um, so back to Idle Spurs. Idle Spurs, which is 60 miles from Vegas. It is in Sandy Valley. The number on the sign had to be changed. Remember this scene? Let's say, in other words, I'm fucked. In so many words, yes. Yeah, in other words, I'm fucked. Remember that? <laughs> You're yeah, that's right. You see, <laughs> that was from trains, planes, and automobiles. <laughs> yeah, I know, but it just reminded me of that scene when I saw that. Okay, pay attention to the jukebox in the background. Let's watch that scene again. Look at the jukebox in the back. In so many words, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Fast. Yeah, you know what? We're going to play that word so much, it's going to get demonetized this video. So, <laughs> uh, okay, so Tony Spilatro was put in the Black Book. Um, that's true. Really happened. Uh, he, he was put in the Black Book in 1978. So, according to this movie... It had been right around 1978 that he was put in the black book. Even though he said earlier in the movie, it's a bunch of bullshit, that book, it doesn't really exist. Only like one person's ever been put in it. It's true. There's been people put in it. I know somebody that's in the black book, as a matter of fact, Red. His name's in the black book. He's not allowed in the casinos. From being um, muscle. He's an enforcer or something. Anyway. Isn't Frank in the black book? Frank Collada was not in the black book. No. Tony Spilatro's okay. black book. Okay, so uh, it's true. But that jukebox in the background, did you see the digital display on it? <laughs> yes. Okay. <laughs> see that? The green, the green digital display there? Let's see. Okay. That didn't come around till the mid 80s. They didn't have that green digital display. The jukeboxes back then, you pushed the buttons on, and that was it. It popped up in the thing, and probably still had records. I don't think they had discs at that point. So there you go. Another inaccuracy. Okay? So yeah. now, now, but was Tony put in the black book? Fact. Yes, he was. Was it dramatized? Yes. Hey, you're in the black book. You're in the black book. Yeah. That's it. Okay. They talk about this scene. They're stealing inside the house. And while they're in the house, it turns the picture down because they don't want people looking at him while he's stealing I like from the him. people I was ripping off looking at me, so I used to turn their fucking pictures around. Okay. Anybody have any problem with that scene? Pipe up in the comments. Just wanted to see if anybody else noticed what the hell's wrong with that scene. I'm going to play it again. You guys can take a look. And then I want you to tell me What's the matter with this? I didn't scene? like the people I was ripping off looking at me, so I used to turn their fucking pictures around. Nobody noticed. The Except mag me. light. The mag light. The mag light, exactly. Look at the mag light in his hand. I didn't like the people I was ripping off looking at me, so I used to turn their fucking pictures around. You see that silver ring around the mag light on the handle? That means it's a recharge. 
They didn't make the rechargeable mag lights yet until mid 80s. So, eh, wrong flashlight. They should have put some tape over that. All right, my favorite shot in the entire movie, Red. I told you what my favorite shot is. I'm sure it's other people's favorite shot too. There it is. That's my favorite, okay? Put in the comments what your favorite shot I love it. Of the whole movie was, okay? Um, uh, that's, that's mine anyways. This is Martin Scorsese's favorite shot. Courtney. I believe it. This is no, not this one. This one that I'm going to show you. It's his favorite shot of the whole movie. Maybe you did both. Um, let me get rid of that comment so that I can see the whole screen. Okay, take a look. You'll see Sharon Stone in the bottom left. That's why I wanted to get rid of the comment. Maybe you did both. Maybe you did both. Her throwing the Maybe you did both. yeah. Maybe you did both. Maybe shot. You did both. I don't know if it's, but that the, the car going through the sunglasses, I thought that was really clever. So don't know. Now, for those of you that have been in Vegas on the Vegas mob tour, sometimes when we go to the casino house, the owner has he has two cars. They have two cars. One's usually in the garage. The Mustang, the convertible Mustang, it's usually in the garage. Some of you that have been on the tour have seen it. There it is in the movie Casino. I Dick has told me for so long, oh, it's in front of the bank at the casino. By the way, we go past this place on the Vegas Mob Tour. Mm -hmm. uh, we show you the Vegas Valley Savings and Loan uh, on the tour. But there's his car, and it's in the movie Casino. So, and speaking of uh, his car being in the movie Casino, um, he and Sherry are also in the movie Casino, the two owners. Uh, of the house, of the casino house. And uh, they are right here. I'm going to take you right there. Right there. Okay. So there it is. When the police car pulls up uh, on the right, the police officer on the right in that shot with the sunglasses on, that is Officer Randy Sutton. Randy Sutton uh, retired as a lieutenant on the department, but he was. Um, God, he was in Miss Congeniality 2. He was in um, When Fools Rush In. He was on Cops. He was on Vegas, the TV show. Look him up on IMDb, Randy Sutton. You'll see he's got a Another list. Dennis Farina. He was in a movie and became a movie star. <laughs> there you go, right? Um, now, in the movie Casino, in the beginning, uh, we're still in the beginning of the movie. You were right, Red. We aren't going to get through this whole damn thing in one episode of this uh the That's show we're I gonna said. have to do a second. I'm not even through the clips that I have, and we're almost at uh, at the game time. But we can carry it over to my show afterwards. Well, yeah, we're gonna talk. We're gonna talk more about it um, on Red's channel. So check this out. Remember when Mr. Ichikawa wins all the money and he goes and leaves the casino, and they said to him, "Oh, Mr. Ichikawa, you know, you know, better down here than up there, guy. Let's go back to the casino and make his plane break down." Remember that? Watch that scene. Watch the scene. I love this. Oh, oh, and pay attention to the folly. Listen to the folly. Love All right, you guys catch what's going on there? <laughs> uh, uh, you guys hear what's going on? Did you see what's happening? Anybody? All right, let me, let me, let me, let me put a still frame of that up, okay? Just so you guys can look at the still frame while we talk about it. What's the matter with that part of the movie? Well... Well, the turbine, the engine, you see it sitting there? Yeah. It's not it's spinning. spinning. <laughs> it's not spinning. They're but listen, going nowhere. You hear it winding up, but watch as she walks up, you're going to see that turbine sitting there. I not love this free rooms, free private jets, and two million of our money. But we got him back. I had our pilot tell him the plane was on the foot. See that? No spinning. So, just sat there. All right. Now, did they really do that, Red? Did they really keep the gamblers in the casinos? Of oh, course yeah. they did. Definitely. They did anything yeah. to keep the gamblers in the casino. They get you drunk. They keep you sitting there for hours. They don't even put clocks up in the casino. They don't want you to know how much time you wasted sitting there. 
As he said, we trap track. you. This is a place where we trap you. We come out and take your money. <laughs> yeah, is. Okay, next one. This shot is from Lester Diamond's house. So the James Woods character. That house sits on the back of KLAS Channel 8 property, right off of Channel 8 Drive, across from the Guardian Angel Cathedral. There's a seafoam green house with two chimneys on the back of the property. It used to be Howard Hughes's home. Hughes Corp owned it for a short while. It's a filming location from the movie Casino. And in the movie, in the beginning, when she is in that place, Sharon Stone, when I say she is in that place, with uh, James Woods, as he leaves, she's getting some drugs from him or giving him some money. I don't remember what the exchange was. She, uh, He leaves, gets in the car, and pulls out. And as his blue car is leaving, uh huh, you see that in the background? That's the Frontier Hotel. Now, as far as I know, <laughs> far as I know, okay, when was the Frontier um, I don't know if it existed back then. So it existed. They, they built it in 42. But when did they build the tower? When did they build the big building? Um, that's something I'd like to know. Because I don't know. I don't think it existed back then. That's later. I don't Get think back I, to the desert, Adam. I want to see the tiles. tiles tire the tire? You want to on the tire? All right, all right, all right. Okay, so back to my favorite scene. My favorite shot from the whole movie Casino. And you guys, did you put it in your comments which ones you guys liked? Oh, Adam, it was the plane next to that one that was winding up. Sure, sure it was. Okay, right. <laughs> oh, gosh. The first half of the movie is the best anyway. Um, I'm just looking at your, your comments, guys. I just want to see some of these. Wow, this hour has gone by fast. No kidding, Scott. This one's flown by. Usually we're sitting here going, what are we talking about next? Um, the plane uh, in the sky wasn't made until the 70s. The plane in the sky wasn't made until the 70s. Plane in the sky? Uh, I didn't know what you guys were. Are you talking about the plane that's taken off in the background? Hold on. There's a plane that takes off in the background. Let me take a look at that. Um, when we're doing the planes. We have new this free rooms, free private jets, and two million of our money. But we got it back. I had our pilot tell him the plane... Yeah, see the plane in the sky that's coming in? Okay. All right, here we go. Back to that scene in the desert. Check it out. Listen to the folly. Again, very important here. And let me get rid of this comment here. Okay, here we go. Hear those tires squeal? That's have sand. You, have, you, those have you ever been on sugar water. sand in the desert? Have you ever been on sugar sand in the desert? The tires do not squeal. <laughs> tires squealing in sand. Come on, Marty. What were you thinking? Okay. Watch this. Remo Gaji. His cigarettes magically turn into a lighter and then magically turn back into cigarettes. What the hell is he going to do now? I don't know. What's he doing? He knows all those guys he yelled out at friends of ours. Sorry, let, let's play that again. I got to get rid of the banner um, because it's, it's crossing the, the bottom of the screen. You don't see the lighter. Let's play it again. Um, cigarettes that change to a lighter. All right. What the hell is he going to do now? I don't know. What's he doing? He knows all those guys he yelled out at friends of ours. You can just see the top of it. It's a Zippo lighter, but then it turns back into a, a, a pack of cigarettes. Or how about when um, when he gets all worked up at the store and he backs up into a bunch of bottles of olive oil and they fall Artie, over. Artie, yeah. Yeah, Artie Piscano. Yeah, he backs up into the... Boop, knocks the bottles over, and then in the next scene, the bottles are perfect. Yeah. You know, at the end, they're, they're all stacked up. Went back and forth, back and forth. Like <laughs> Unbelievable. Um, oh, how about the vanishing playing card? I thought I was good with the magic. That's watch, good. Watch the King of Clubs. It's on his shirt. He turns, turns back, not there. Not on his shirt, not on the table. It's just gone. Pound it up your fucking ass. 
Hit me again. King of Clubs vanishes. Magically gone. See that? They did magic in that movie, Red. Oh, and recently this happened. Recently this happened. Out on the strip, this made news. Pair of $100,000 jackpots hit at a Las Vegas casino. In a row! In a row! Hit two of them in a row. That actually, this is five days ago, guys. This happened. You know what? I all, all I kept thinking about while I saw that. No, people gotta win sometimes. Hey. People gotta win sometimes. No, no, people gotta win sometimes. Hey, what? You pissing me off? No. Fucking Momo. You hear that, Red? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Hey guys, I, I've had a blast. We're gonna we're gonna pick up where we left off today because uh, this has been too much too much fun. So, uh, Red, I'll see you on your show. Have a great day, guys. It's been fun. It's been my vlog.